The unfortunate story of the Ocean Gate implosion is a tragic example of the serious dangers that can arise from the use of submarines. The fact is, if something goes wrong, this is usually followed by a dark and suffocating end. Personally, I can't think of a more horrifying way to go. But a fact which may come as somewhat of a surprise is that fatal submarine accidents are far more common than you might think. On the 12th of August in 2000, a nuclear-powered submarine of the Russian Navy known as the Kursk was participating in a naval exercise in the Barents Sea. The submarine was conducting a routine torpedo drill as part of the exercise involving the launch of dummy torpedoes, but devastatingly, during the exercise an explosion occurred in the bow compartment of the submarine, resulting in catastrophic damage. The explosion was so powerful that it caused the submarine to sink to the seabed approximately 108 meters below. The explosion resulted in the immediate loss of the lives of all 118 crew members on board the Kursk. It is believed that many crew members in the forward compartments were killed instantly by the blast, while others in the rear compartments initially survived the explosion, but were unable to escape or be rescued. Following the disaster, international assistance was offered, including from the United Kingdom and Norway. However, the Russian government initially declined assistance and chose to carry out its own rescue operation. Russian authorities dispatched several rescue vessels to the scene, but their efforts were hindered by the extreme depth and challenging conditions. Despite initial hopes that some crew members may have survived, later investigations revealed that there were no survivors. The remaining crew members had perished due to the combination of the initial explosion, subsequent flooding and the lack of oxygen and other life-sustaining resources. The cause of the explosion was determined to be a faulty torpedo, more specifically a leak of the high-test peroxide propellant which was used in the fuel system of the torpedo and had become unstable, leading to an uncontrolled detonation. The Kursk submarine disaster shocked Russia and it sparked widespread criticism of the initial rescue efforts and the transparency of the Russian government in handling the incident, but also highlighted the importance of safety protocols in submarine operations. Understandably, investigations and reforms were undertaken by the Russian Navy to improve safety standards and rescue capabilities. However, despite their hard work, this would not be the only time one of their submarines would suffer a catastrophic accident, as demonstrated by this next story. On the 8th of November in 2008, another Russian nuclear-powered attack submarine, otherwise known as the Nerpa, was also conducting a trial, this time in the Sea of Japan, to test the durability of the vessel. During the trials, the submarine would carry a crew of naval personnel, shipyard workers and civilian contractors. At first, everything was going smoothly and everyone on board was in high spirits, but then, tragically, while the submarine was submerged deep in the sea, the automatic fire suppression system was suddenly triggered, releasing a large amount of toxic gas into one particular area of the vessel. The release of this gas led to the suffocation and poisoning of many crew members and personnel on board. Some reports indicate that the gas was released due to the accidental activation of a firefighting system, while others suggest it was the result of a simple malfunction. But either way, once the gas was released, the emergency procedures were initiated, including sealing off the affected compartment and activating backup systems to restore breathable air. Also, distress signals were sent to nearby Russian and international vessels for assistance. Rescue efforts were launched and multiple vessels including a nearby Russian Navy ship and a Japanese destroyer responded to the distress signals. However, the incident had already claimed the lives of 20 crew members, with dozens of others injured. The surviving crew members were evacuated from the submarine, with some transported to hospitals for medical treatment. The submarine was then escorted back to its base for further investigation into the accident. Following this, there were investigations into the cause of the accident and the responsibility for the safety lapses. 
it was soon determined that this incident was caused by a combination of factors, including the improper handling of the firefighting equipment and the failure to provide adequate training to the personnel on board. Nevertheless, this tragic submarine disaster remains one of the deadliest incidents in recent naval history, again emphasising the importance of safety protocols and comprehensive training. However, despite the heartbreaking nature of this story, the Nurpa disaster is shockingly one of the tamer incidents on this list, as at the very least, there were some survivors, a detail which eludes this next story. On the 15th of November in 2017, a German-built diesel-electric submarine, also known as the ARA San Juan, went missing while on a routine mission in the South Atlantic Ocean. At the time, the submarine was carrying a crew of 44 members, including an officer. The last communication was made when the captain reported a failure in the submarine's battery system caused by a short circuit, resulting in a fire. The fire was reportedly extinguished and the vessel continued its journey towards its home port of Mar del Plata, but this was only the beginning. A few hours later, contact with the submarine was lost, and it failed to make further communication or return to the port as scheduled, so a search and rescue operation was immediately launched to locate the missing submarine. International assistance was sought after, and multiple countries including the US, the UK, Brazil and Chile provided aid in the search efforts. Ships, aircrafts and underwater rescue vehicles were deployed to scour the vast ocean area where the submarine was believed to have disappeared. But despite an extensive search that lasted for several weeks, the ARA San Juan was still nowhere to be found although this was likely due to the challenging ocean conditions, including strong winds and high waves, which inevitably hampered the search efforts. Nevertheless, two weeks later, an underwater explosion was detected near the submarine's last known location, which was believed to have been caused by a catastrophic event, such as the implosion of the submarine's hull at great depths, very similar to that of the recent Ocean Gate disaster. Tragically, all 44 crew members on board were presumed dead following the implosion. The loss of the submarine and its crew sent shockwaves throughout Argentina as efforts continued to investigate the cause of the incident and recover the wreckage. In the subsequent months, further search operations were conducted to locate and retrieve the remains of the submarine, and in November of 2018, the wreckage of the ARA San Juan was finally found at a depth of approximately 900 metres in the South Atlantic Ocean, about 600 kilometres off the coast of Argentina. The exact cause of the disaster remains uncertain, but investigations pointed to several potential contributing factors, including mechanical failure, battery malfunctions and maintenance issues which once again highlights the challenges and risks involved in submarine operations. However, I feel it's important to note that when it comes to the use of submarines, there are always new lessons to be learned, a fact no better illustrated than by this final story. On the 21st of April in 2021, an Indonesian Navy submarine known as the KRI Nangala 402 went missing during a training exercise in the Bali Sea. The submarine had been conducting a torpedo firing drill intending to live fire its torpedoes as part of the training event, but after the submarine had completed its deep sea dive, it failed to establish contact as scheduled. Concerns were immediately raised about the safety of the vessel and its 53 crew members, so search and rescue efforts were launched by the Indonesian Navy, involving multiple ships and aircrafts from Indonesia and other countries in the region. Sonar technology was initially used to locate the submarine's last known position, approximately 60 miles off the coast of Bali. As the search continued, deep sea remotely piloted vehicles were deployed to assist in the search and provide visual confirmation of the submarine's condition. Tragically, the sonar and ROV images revealed that the KRI Nangala 402 had suffered insurmountable damage. 
it was discovered that the submarine had broken up into three separate parts at a depth of approximately 838 meters on the seabed. The cause of the submarine's destruction was attributed to the moment it fired a torpedo during the exercise. It is believed that the high water pressure at that depth caused the submarine's hull to collapse and fracture, leading to its disintegration. The submarine's wreckage and debris were found scattered across the seabed. Despite the extensive search and rescue efforts, there were no survivors from the KRI Nangala 402, and the loss of the submarine and its entire crew was a devastating tragedy for Indonesia. The government expressed deep sorrow and initiated investigations to determine the exact cause of the accident. They also sought international assistance to recover the submarine's wreckage and to analyse the incident further, which prompted a renewed focus on submarine safety. Nevertheless, it would seem that even in this day and age, with the numerous examples of errors and learning opportunities, submarine disasters are an inevitability. Perhaps with the recent Ocean Gate implosion, there will be a new surge of safety protocols to try and prevent any future incidents, but if history is anything to go by, I fear it won't be too long before we're hearing about the next underwater tragedy. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video interesting, make sure to check out the video on screen now, where I cover the outrageous story of the largest bank robbery in UK history.